Greetings, friends. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, we read warnings so important that they are represented as being proclaimed by three holy angels flying in the midst of heaven. You can read these messages for yourself in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 12. But in summary, these special messages call for worship of the true God and the rejection of false systems of worship. It includes a fearful judgment against the worship of the beast and his image. How important it is, then, that we diligently study the prophecies to learn what the mark of the beast is and how to avoid receiving it. Unfortunately, rather than studying the prophecies for themselves, many people accept the opinion of others as to the meaning of these important messages. We read in the book, The Great Controversy, that Satan is constantly endeavoring to attract attention to man in the place of God. He leads the people to look to bishops, to pastors, to professors of theology as their guides, instead of searching the scriptures to learn their duty for themselves. Then, by controlling the minds of these leaders, he can influence the multitudes according to his will. But when Jesus was on earth, the common people came to hear him and were blessed. Although he often spoke in parables, those who wanted to understand were able to grasp their meaning. Nevertheless, the leaders of the time rejected Jesus, and many people questioned why such pious, learned men would reject Jesus if his message was true. Inspiration tells us it was the influence of such teachers that led the Jewish nation to reject their Redeemer. And the same is true today. The inspired author continues, the spirit which actuated those priests and rulers is still manifested by many who make a high profession of piety. They refused to examine the testimony of the scriptures concerning the special truths for this time. They point to their own numbers, wealth, and popularity, and look with contempt upon the advocates of truth as few, poor, and unpopular having a faith that separates them from the world. Friends, let's remember that the book of Revelation is, as it says in its very first verse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. Now, the word revelation means to reveal unveil or to make known. And the Bible assures us that the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So, contrary to what some may say, Revelation is not a sealed book. It is open for all to read and understand with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, comparing Scripture with Scripture. After all, God has given us His Word so we can become acquainted with its teachings and know for ourselves what He requires of us. So, how should we study the Bible? In chapter 37 of the Great Controversy, titled, The Scriptures a Safeguard. Several important principles are given. We're told, it is the first and highest duty of every rational being to learn from the Scriptures what is truth, and then to walk in the light and encourage others to follow his example. Secondly, we should day by day study the Bible diligently, weighing every thought and comparing Scripture with Scripture. With divine help, we are to form our opinions for ourselves as we are to answer for ourselves before God. Unfortunately, there are some who teach that the Bible has a 
mystical, secret meaning that is not apparent in the language employed. But inspiration tells us these men are false teachers. It was to such a class that Jesus declared, Ye know not the Scriptures, neither the power of God. Thirdly, and very importantly, the language of the Bible should be explained according to its obvious meaning, unless a symbol or figure is employed. The inspired author continues, If men would but take the Bible as it reads, if there were no false teachers to mislead and confuse their minds, a work would be accomplished that would make angels glad and that would bring into the fold of Christ thousands upon thousands who are now wandering in error. Fourthly, we should not be afraid to study the scriptures deeply, but always humbly with the spirit of a learner. Difficult passages of Scripture can never be mastered by the same methods that are employed in grappling with philosophical problems. We are warned not to engage in Bible study with the self-reliance with which so many enter the domains of science, but with a prayerful dependence upon God and a sincere desire to learn His will. We're told, we must come with a humble and teachable spirit to obtain knowledge from the great I Am. Otherwise, evil angels will so blind our minds and harden our hearts that we shall not be impressed by the truth. And finally, the Bible should never be studied without prayer. The Holy Spirit alone can guide us in fully understanding the text and to prevent us from resting or changing or in some way misconstruing the Scripture out of its true meaning. Furthermore, those wishing to study God's Word have this wonderful assurance. It is the office of heavenly angels to prepare the heart so to comprehend God's Word that we shall be charmed with its beauty, admonished by its warnings, or animated and strengthened by its promises. My dear friends, as we consider the importance of Bible study, let's make this beautiful prayer of the psalmist our own. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. I invite you to pray with me just now. Father in heaven, thank you for the marvelous revelation of truth in the Bible, and especially the prophecies in the book of Revelation, a book which is to reveal to us what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit wish for us to know in these last days of Earth's history. Help us not to in some way make the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel or any of the Bible some mystical secret document. Help us to understand that we are to understand what you have said and to understand it in the plainest fashion. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the clarity given to us in the Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.